Shukran. I thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Allow me, at first, Mr. President, to uh, welcome Her Excellency, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, and to welcome her, and to express our gratitude uh, to the uh, sisterly state of Pakistan for this initiative to hold and chair this important meeting that has been dedicated to discussing the issue of counterterrorism. Terrorism is uh, a scourge that all member states uh, have pledged to combat. I also like to thank uh, the uh, permanent mission of Pakistan for the concept paper that has been presented in this regard. I take the opportunity of this meeting to express uh, on behalf of my government, express our deepest condolences to the government and people of Pakistan as over the terrorist act uh, in Quetta, which has killed dozens of innocents. Our sympathy, Mr. President, our sympathy with Pakistan, both government and people, stems from our belief in principle in the need to combat terrorism as a collective and comprehensive entity. And it also stems from a painful reality that today struck the University of Aleppo a cowardly terrorist act that targeted the students of Aleppo University as they sat for their midterm examinations. This act killed 82 students and wounded 162 other students. Mr. President, we have always said that the terrorist armed groups in my country always take advantage of a Security Council meeting to perpetrate a terrorist act inside Syria. And this is indeed what happened today, perhaps for the 10th or 20th time since the crisis in my country began. Mr. President, you have rightly chosen for our meeting the title, A Comprehensive Approach to Counterterrorism. We fully share your opinion on the merits of your choice of this title because today we are more than ever in need of this comprehensive approach in combating terrorism. And there are broad similarities between the tools and techniques that have been used and are still being used by terrorists in many states, many member states, and those used today in my country. There are, the question is that how many of the trans-border foreign terrorists who are currently active in Syria had a role earlier in the killing and injuring of civilians in many other countries. And how many of those terrorists uh, practicing the terrorism in Syria today will move on in the future to other areas, just as happened in the recent past and what is happening today? Anyone who believes that they are able to e get the genie out of the lamp of terrorism can put him back. Anyone who believes that, that they can manipulate the genie of terrorism uh, in such a way are misguided and deluded because those who play with terrorism will one day fall victim to this terrorism. And despite the late international recognition of the existence of armed terrorist groups, some of which are affiliated with Al-Qaeda, committing the most horrific crimes in my country, Syria, there are still some states that continue publicly 
in their policies supporting these terrorist organizations by providing financing, arming, training, harboring and issuing fatwas as well as offering these groups political and media support. Today, Mr. President, I will give an example of this media coverage and this is a practical example. Today, armed terrorist groups attacked the homes and dormitories of Syrian army elements in the city of Dar'a in southern Syria where only women and children were present. These armed groups perpetrated an attack, a terrorist attack, and killed and wounded and harmed the dignity of and humiliated whoever they could. What's important here is that the Arabiya channel, which is considered the operations room for that directs these uh, terrorist actions. What's ironic is that this channel actually broadcast news of this uh, act before it even happened and considered it a blow by the terrorist groups in Syria against the regime. And this is what we mean by media cover and by media support given to terrorism and armed groups in Syria. Al-Qaeda affiliated terrorist organizations have publicly claimed responsibility for the terrorist attacks that they perpetrated in Syria in response to orders issued by leaders of that network. And among the among these organizations affiliated with Al-Qaeda are Jabhat al-Nusra, which claimed responsibility for many terrorist attacks in Syria. And recently, the American news channel CNN I repeat, the American news channel CNN, not Syrian television, has confirmed recently, in cooperation with many Western think tanks, that Jabhat al-Nusra is alone responsible for more than 600 terrorist attacks in Syria over the past two years. Mr. President, we have repeatedly warned this council and we called upon it for more logic and wisdom and we have issued warnings through hundreds of statements, meetings and official communications to the United Nations and its agencies throughout the crisis in Syria. We have warned of the dangers of terrorists flowing into my country under subversive slogans such as doctrinal and sectarian jihad and holy war against the diverse social fabric that characterizes the Syrian people. We have demanded that countries supporting these terrorist groups must stop. And we also called upon the Security Council, the General Assembly, and the Counterterrorism Committees to undertake their responsibilities in this regard. However, countries with influence have thwarted taking any concrete action to combat the terrorism being perpetrated in my country, Syria. These influential countries in this council have even prevented the council from issuing seven press statements condemning terrorist attacks that claim the lives of hundreds of innocent Syrians. Moreover, Influential countries have blocked the issuing of some urgent letters that I sent in the name of my country's government to the Security Council and the Secretary General on the 21st of November 2012, and which includes the names of 143 foreign terrorists that were killed in Syria. This letter has not been issued as an official document yet even though two months have passed since we made this request. And despite the fact that reports from the United Nations itself have indicated recently the presence of foreign fighters from more than 29 states in Syria. Mr. President, 
the terrorist activities carried out by some groups in Syria has, have reached dangerous levels in terms of quantity and quality. These groups have targeted vital facilities and infrastructure in several areas in order to bring about the comprehensive destruction of society and to dry all the sources of livelihood for citizens, whether in terms of food, medicine, energy sources, fuel derivatives, roads, and means of communications. Not one single Syrian can be convinced that the actions of these armed groups supported by black petrodollars and huge amounts of hatred and non-patriotism that aim to impose hunger on these citizens and deprive them of their homes and security, leaving them in the cold and suffering from disease and pushing them to refugee camps. Nobody can believe that all of these are a spring that aims to serve them and to establish reform and freedom. How can we explain the reason terrorist groups target international humanitarian aid provided by the United Nations and other agencies? as well as the assassination of Syrian Red Crescent volunteers and the threats that these groups make against international workers and diplomatic missions accredited in Syria. What is the humanitarian significance of targeting civilian aircraft? It is sure that the goal of this blind, vindictive terrorism practiced in Syria is to destroy the state and society and not to spread democracy, reform governance mechanisms, and protect and promote human rights and combat corruption, all of which are issues that are popular demands in Syria and which enjoy consensus among the different as uh, factions of Syrian society. Mr. President, The suspicious uh, and the suspicious goals that some countries try to achieve uh, by supporting terrorism and extremism in my, in my country have started to flow to the surface. We see Israel now using the excuse uh, of uh, some extremist uh, terrorist uh, groups uh, infiltrating the buffer zone in the Golan to justify building a wall uh, along the ceasefire line that would be 42 kilometers long on the territories of the occupied Syrian Golan in the buffer zone. And what comes to the mind of any beginner in politics is to ask the about the side and party that has supported the actions of these terrorists to enable them to reach that zone to begin with. And the parties that have helped establish uh, such a movement and have set the right conditions for it at this timing in particular, especially since high-level officials at the Department of Peacekeeping Operations in the UN have ignored documented information that we have provided to them at the time on the facilities that Israel is offering, Israel, the occupying power in the Golan, to these terrorists. Must we not wonder, Mr. President, and must you not wonder along with us, that the first suspect in any crime is usually the person who aims to profit from this crime or who stands to profit from it? We are witnessing a directed terrorism wearing the mask of those mongering in religion and media and embodied in takfiri jihadist extremist fatwas issued by some fake clerics who appear on satellite TV channels that promote ignorance and terrorism. The great amount of incitement for terrorism and alleged jihad in Syria and other Arab and Western countries that is rampant on the web and especially on online social networks must lead us to reflect carefully on the seriousness of the United Nations efforts to address the use by terrorists of the Internet and means of communication to spread their ideas and mislead young innocents. One must wonder, Mr. President, 
for whose sake have Western nations, particular Western nations, mounted the wave of demands for le legitimate reform in the Arab world and di di has diverted these demands from their path and forged an alliance with extremist Islamic organizations which, once coming to power, would remove their masks and start searching for bases in countries that have not known such organizations in the past. And in whose interests, Mr. President, are prisoners and detainees from Al-Qaeda smuggled out of prisons and sent to Syria with the funding and support from well-known countries and parties such as Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and a specific political group in Lebanon. Between the dreams of an Islamic caliphate that some aspire to and uh, the dreams of reviving the Ottoman Sultanate, uh, among others, as well as the theory of creative chaos uh, among a third party, people, nations are suffering and monuments are destroyed and uh, wis wisdom is slaughtered on the altar of extremism. Mr. President, the Turkish government has exploited the suffering of the Syrian people to practice piracy and economic terrorism embodied in collusion with armed groups to steal nearly 1,500 pharmaceutical and industrial facilities, dismantling them and moving them from the city of Aleppo to Turkey. These criminal acts, which target the livelihoods of Syrians and their factors of development should be condemned in the same way we condemn conventional terrorism acts that lead to immediate death and destruction. This behavior calls for a firm response from the Security Council demanding that the Turkish government return all stolen property to its Syrian owners and provide compensation to those affected. And as the Prime Minister of Turkey called a few days ago on the imperialist states, he, he described them as imperialist states, he called upon them to return the fortunes looted from Africa. He should also call upon his government to return the material that it looted from Syria and to stop the practices that harm the brotherly Turkish people and the neighborly relations between the two countries. Mr. President, this is only the tip of the iceberg. Regional and international interference in our international affairs has become blunt and overlooking the violations committed by some states of the most basic principles that international legitimacy was based on has become shameful and the exploitation of Syrian blood to carry out terrorist destructive evil political agendas has become flagrant. Mr. President, how can we move to combat terrorism in Mali while at the same time we encourage and sponsor and arm the same brand of terrorism in my country, Syria? In closing, Mr. President, I would like to express my regard to the new members of the Security Council, the permanent representatives of Australia and Argentina and the Republic of Korea and Rwanda and Luxembourg. I would like to congratulate them on their membership in the Security Council and I wish them success and good luck in pushing forward the way this Council deals decisively with the issue of countering terrorism in the entire world. Thank you, sir. Well, thank